hi folks, this is Darren with My RV Works. I've got another furnace video for you today. I almost didn't want to record this one because we have so many other furnace videos. Um, so if you're having troubles with your furnace and this video doesn't capture your problem, you can go to YouTube, My RV Works, and you'll find our channel, and then navigate over on the top to Playlist, and we've got a whole bunch of other furnace videos um, on our playlist. We're, we're organizing the channel so people can find things on our playlists. A little bit easier. Uh, so we've got a playlist, oh geez, uh, for furnaces, for refrigerators, for um, water heaters, uh, lots of playlists. And we're starting to organize a little bit better. And another thing we're doing is we're starting to put links in the description for tools and things that I use. A lot of the comments that I've read have asked for, well, what is this part number and how do you use that? So we're putting some links on some of the parts and tools that I use and uh, so you can link to it. Yes, it's an affiliate link. So if, if this adds value to you, you can give us a thumb up and then you can go buy your your tool or whatever and I make my little eight cents or whatever. So um, that, that's a little thing we're adding there. So um, what we're doing here is working on a furnace. When the customer turns on the thermostat and they call for heat, uh, all the furnace does is just makes a click sound. No fan, nothing. And uh, so we're gonna bring you in, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna go through that. Like I said, I almost was not going to do a fur another furnace video because I have so many already, but this one's doing something a little different than all my other videos. So I figured another opportunity to kind of come along with Darren and, and follow along with my troubleshooting methodology. I'm very linear in my troubleshooting. Um, I always, the challenge that I think a lot of people have is where do you start? Um, if you understand theory of operation on these appliances, refrigerators, water heaters, furnaces, and, and slide rooms and leveling jacks and all that, if you understand theory of operation, great, but a lot of people I feel have a, have a problem. Where do you start? And so I want to make sure that I capture what goes through my brain when I'm doing these troubleshooting tips uh, or when I'm diagnosing a problem on, on where do you start and, and, and how do you know which way to go with a problem. So uh, now we've got a lively game of hide and seek outside with some neighbor kids and, and uh, so you might hear a ready or not here I come and that's kind of fun. We're at Whiskey Creek RV Park uh, just north of Joyce, Washington and um, you know, you got the Shredo Juan de Fuca. Maybe as a bonus video at the end of this, I'll, I'll turn you around and show you that. Uh, we've been up to this park a couple times and it's just beautiful. We love it. Now with the kids outside, I told them you cannot run in a campground. You can only ran because it's past tense. That's a grammar joke, folks. Past tense, you know. Okay, let's get to work. Working on furnaces. Okay, this is the thermostat that this particular model has. Um, it's loose. I'm going to tell you why here in a second. And... Um, uh, but basically we have a thermostat. Now, um, the first thing I want to do when I work on these things is I want to try to turn it on. I want to recreate the customer's complaint. And the reason I do that is, is for several reasons. One, it gives the customer an opportunity to demonstrate to me exactly why they called me out here. But also, let's say that, uh, the, and this is more of a business um, protecting liability reason, but I'll share it with you. So if I'm working on this furnace and all I hear is a click, um, and I'm working on the furnace. I want to, I want to recreate this problem, if that makes sense. Because if I hear a click, uh, let, let me use an aqua hot as an example. Um, my, my brain automatically goes to aqua hot on these things. Aqua hot is a hydronic heating system. They're really complicated and all this kind of stuff, but we're certified to work on those. What I have found is when I get to these systems, I want the customer to, let me turn you around. So here, I'll, I'll do this. There, there. See a little, little. So when I get when I get to on a on a job site, I want to recreate the problem. There you are. I want to recreate the problem because I want to know that I'm I'm not creating other problems. Sometimes um, I've had it happen to me one time. I was called out to work on an aqua hot system, and um, uh, uh, let's say the widget was bad, whatever the problem was, and so I fixed that. But then there was another problem, and the customer. Love my customers, but the customer said that I caused that problem. And there's no way, knowing what I know about these systems, that Darren would have caused the problem that he was having. But on that instance, I never uh, turned the system on to begin with to find out if it was working properly. So when I come to a job, I really want to know, I want to make sure that the customer and I are in total communication and we agree that this is the problem, this is what you called me out for, this is what I'm going to work on. Um, and I'm not going to work on your furnace and, oh, look, you made the light in the bedroom not work. Well, the light in the bedroom was working. Well, no, no, it was working before, and now it's your fault. So I, uh, I've had that happen several times. Not a lot, but it, it has happened. So I really want to be careful on um, on that. So there's a little side note if you're doing this for a business. Uh, make sure that you're 
you have good communication with your customers and you're working on the right thing. Okay, now that we're done with that, let me turn you back over here. Right there. Okay, so uh, like I said, I almost was not going to record this video because I've got so many other furnace videos. But let me show you something in, in this thermostat. What we have here is a heat anticipator. Now, this video I'm not going to cover how to set the heat anticipator. I'm going to do a whole other video on how to set the heat anticipator. Um, but uh, that's not the problem with this furnace. But I do want to point out that if you have this style of furnace or ones that are just for the furnace, it is important to set the heat anticipator. Another video, I'll cover all that. So basically, all this thing does is basically connects these two wires that goes to the furnace, okay? So if you're wondering if your thermostat's not right, just take the thing off, touch the two wires together, your furnace should start. Now, when I first got here, I did that, and I heard the same click that customer's complaining about. So I'm thinking, okay, well, let's, again, very linear in my troubleshooting. I try not to take shortcuts because over the 30 years that I've been doing... I've only been working on RVs since 2011, but before that I was a systems engineer working on million dollar automation systems. And you're very linear in your approach. You don't want to skip over something because that could have been it. So we keep it simple, go linear. Um, so I took this off and I touched these two wires together and I, I confirmed I got the same click that I got when I operated my uh, thermostat temperature selector. So therefore, it is not the thermostat. Now, notice this is a a brown jacket with a red and white wire. Let's go see what the other end's like. Now on the other end, we have the brown jacket with the red and white wire. So here's the other end of it. Now I do notice that it's gotten a little, the, the insulation is, is, is a little skinned off. Um, so um, again, okay, what do you mean linear? Well, I started with a the thermostat, then I touch the two wires together at the thermostat, and here's the other end of it. I can ring those out, which, which I'd like to do, but uh, I'm gonna ring these wires out and make sure that it's the exact same wire. But when I touch these two wires together, listen. You hear that click? That's the same thing we're hearing when I go through the thermostat. So we've we've marched our way right into this problem here. Um, now here's what we know on these boards. Um, we've got it on, and the customers cut this out. Um, which is nice because otherwise we would have had to have pulled the whole furnace out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my meter set up and I'm going to be checking for voltage on key points here um, and um, see if we can't figure out what's going on with this thing. Now I do see that this is an aftermarket board. It's a dinosaur board so the board's been replaced once before and um, so it could be something as simple as a ground's not connected but we need our meter to be able to see inside the electrical wiring and understand what's going on here. So let me get my meter set up and we'll, we'll go a little farther into this. So we hear the click here, okay? Now, one of these wires, now I've grounded my, my black lead is grounded to the frame. So one of these should be 12 volts hot and it's this one right here. So I'm 12 volts on my meter, I'm reading 13.3. So that goes up to the thermostat. I come back from the thermostat on this wire here and then when I touch them, that is my 12 volts. Okay, so therefore, if I make it through my cell switch and I make it through everything, I should have 12 volts on this blue wire right here. I'm just gonna touch this pin, and there's my 13 volts. Okay, so the problem is not with the sales switch, it's not with the high limit thermostat, okay? Now this red wire right here that I'm pointing to, that should be 12 volts hot. Uh, it's not. Okay, so, and then I have the gas valve, which is brown, and I have ground which is uh, if I turn this on continuity mode and I touch this yellow wire, it should hear a beep. There we go. Okay, I have a good ground going to my board. The brown wire is a gas valve. Um, I've got uh, a good 12 volts coming back from, so watch this trick. So I'm gonna touch these together and open them, but I'm gonna be touching this pin right here. So now I'm the, if you see my meter, I'm touching this second pin over the blue one. And when I touch this together, I get my 12 volts, okay, coming on that. So it looks like the problem is I'm not getting 12 volts on this red wire right here. Uh, that's dead. So we need to go into this and figure out why there is no 12 volts on this wire. I think if we were to get 12 volts on this red wire right here, this thing will work fine. My switch is on. I wonder if it's unplugged. Uh, let's, I, I know I've got 12 volts here, okay? So I've got, uh, I'm down on this plug right here where my blue 12 volts comes out. but So I know I've got 12 volts coming into the furnace. So there's a disconnect between this red wire feeding my furnace and making it up to this board. So um, I'm going to 
kind of wiggle around in there. I might actually need to pull the furnace out to see that, but uh, let's see what I can find without that. Okay, there's been a flurry of activity since I left you when you were in the cabinet. I decided to pull the whole furnace out. So here we have the whole furnace, there's its cover. And um, to, the, the wires were not, I was not getting readings like I was expecting to. Uh, now I did lie to you a little earlier. Remember we we're talking about this red wire right here. This red wire is the one that's coming back from my sale switch, um, the proof switch. And we see that, what I did was I pulled it out. Let me bring you over here. And here's the other end of the red wire, which is what prompted me to pull the whole furnace out. You see, these are where the exhaust ports are here. So, but I'm not getting any voltage here. And the reason I'm not getting any voltage on that red wire is because the fan's not running. So if the fan runs, the sail switch gets made. And, um, uh, but since the fan wasn't running, I was not getting any voltage on my signal wire right there. Okay. Now I have determined what the problem is. It turns out that it's the motor. Um, so here we have, um, I'm stepping all over everything, uh, on our control board, uh, this is the power wire. So when I am 12 volts, this is always hot. And we've confirmed that that's the case. This wire here is the one that turns my motor on. So watch the meter here when I touch the two blue wires together. You'll hear the click. And there we go. Okay. So there we have our 11 volts. I'm coming off my battery pack. It's a known good power source, so, but it's only 11. My point, I've got 11 volts going to that motor, okay? And the motor's not running. So this wire here also goes to the motor so we can disconnect it, okay? And then this is the, uh, oh, well, hold on. I lied to you again. I didn't have, I've already been playing around with this thing for a while. But uh, I'll just tell you what's going on. Um, I put 12 volts directly on the motor. These are the two leads that go to the motor. And uh, the motor still was not working. And um, so then I wanted to make sure it was making working through the board. And uh, let, me, let me connect those real quick. Okay. I've got everything connected. The, the motor is grounded. Um, grounded to there. And let me take my two blue wires, touch them together, and you'll see that the motor... There it is, the meter shows 11. The motor has its voltage and it's nothing. Found another problem right down here. If you look, that wire's got a, where is it? He's nicked, oh, he's upside down. Here, let me unplug him again. So you'll see this little, little, there's some conductors in there. This poor furnace has been worked on several times in the past before we got involved and uh, it's, it's not been put together very well. We, we saw here how someone had, you know, opened up on the side there to get to the control board. It's really easy to pull these things out. So anyway, so what we're gonna do is we're going to get a new motor for this. Um, we've talked to the customer just now. We're gonna take this to our shop. I mean, it's summertime now. We don't need the furnace. It's just something to do. So we're going to um, take this furnace with us, take it apart, put the new motor in it, do a bench test on it, and clean up all these wires, make it all pretty, make it all better, and we'll bring it back and put it in. So here's a quick little bonus video, but um, I figured you'd rather look at that than, than look at me. Uh, but if this video, it, it's, it's an unfinished video, but we did diagnose a problem. So if it was helpful to you, give me a th thumb up. There's my thumb. I'm zoomed in. Um, give us a thumb up and um, uh, subscribe to our channel. That way you'll get more videos like this. And happy camper, say my RV works. And um, what you're looking at there is the Strait of Juan de Fuca. Um, if I'm quiet, you might be able to hear the waves lapping at the shore. Ah, it's too noisy to keep me awake at night. That's a joke. Um, and uh, the other side's Canada. But, um, ah, so nice here. Beautiful day. Uh, the weather is just stunning. Um, okay, enough on that. Uh, next customer is going to be a uh, LP fix. And then later on today, I've got a satellite to install. May or may not do a, uh, a video on that, so... Uh, I will be doing a video install on a satellite dish, but I may not do this particular one. Uh, I like to see what I'm getting into before I roll film. Uh, some customers don't want the camera to roll, and I, I respect that. So it looks like we got some low tide going on over there. Otherwise, that area would be uh, full of water. It's kind of fun to see cruise ships come through there. Waiting for a submarine to go by. That'd be kind of cool. All right, folks. See you next time.